What's up guys, it is Dan from Fightwave and today I'm joined by somebody I'm incredibly excited to speak with. If you know anything about me, you know this is an interview I've been wanting to get for quite some time now. Coming off probably the most exciting fight of the night at UFC Atlantic City. My god, what a finish this was. One of the most exciting fighters on the active roster. The pride and joy of Clarksville, Tennessee. Nate the train in the UFC, baby. You know, look at the bicep. Nate, how we doing, brother? <laughs> Well, uh, just you know, just reeling off this victory, man, back home with the family, enjoying this time, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, Nate. And, you know, you said it yourself best. You're natural on the mic. You're a phenomenal fighter. Talk to me about how everything's been. Now that you've had a couple days to kind of settle down from what was probably the, the best victory of your career thus far against Jamal Emmers and definitely put a statement and, no and put the featherweight division on notice in the UFC. Yeah, 100%, man. He came out hot. He was catching me with some good shit, man. Put his ass to sleep. You know, I got those two uh, those two submissions in the UFC, but, man, a, a good knockout finish. I've been waiting to jump on that cage for quite some time, and that's a check off the list for sure. No, yeah, definitely. And, you know, it was eerily reminiscent of some of your fights in M1. For the fans who know the fight against Mikhail Korobkov, it was some energy in that octagon on Saturday night. Talk to me just about, you know, getting to do what you love, as, first and foremost, in the form of fighting. And also just being able to put on that performance and have that energy in the crowd. Because when you're fighting in, a crowd, in front of a crowd, you're at your smothering best. Oh, yeah, man. That crowd is, uh, you feel the energy, man. And it's like every it, you always the, it changes, you know. When you start, and it's like okay, and, but when two people get to really fight in there, and they both going at it, man, the, the fans know. They know when it's real. They know when it's for. Uh, it's a really about that action. No, yeah, definitely. And for you, you know, anytime I think you fought, we've seen a packed house in front of a crowd. I was actually in San Diego for the Onama fight, Ooh. and woo we man, what a fight that one was, and the crowd. I don't think I've ever seen at any sporting event across the entirety of my lifespan and a crowd as energetic as that crowd in San Diego when Nate the Train was fighting. Something about you and the crowd, it is just a relationship, a harmony between the two. And your, you know, your work on the mic, your mic work and crowd work is second to none in the UFC right now. What is it about just you and the mic? I feel like it's a love relationship at first sight. Yeah, man, I think it just, you know, when I was a kid, I dreamed this shit, man. I watched a whole lot of WWF, too, my boy Stone Cold Steve Austin. And uh, speaking of that fight in San Diego, I feel like one of the hypest moments when I stomped, when I did that stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stop, clap, and the crowd started to talk about get your blood boiling, man. You ready to run through a brick wall. No, yeah, for me, the moment that stood out was when you got you just got right back up off the ground and then you put your hands up in the air and the whole crowd just lost it at that point. It was just an electric moment. And more importantly, you're, you know, your, your mic work is, you know, it comes so natural to you. I know you're a fan of pro wrestling from a youth, you know, you know, you said born in the 80s, it's hard not to be a fan of pro wrestling coming up as a child. You know, talk to me just about the inspiration on the mic because it feels like for you, it's not forced, it's natural. And I think that's what a lot of people love when you get on that mic. Oh yeah, none of this, none of this is scripted. Nobody wrote it down for me or went over it in the back with lines. It's just like, uh, it's hard because everybody wants me to be like when they do the post fight interview or the pre fight interview. Like, where's this energy? I'm like, man, I can't force it. When you see me jump on the mic, I just think about it. those 10, 15, 20 seconds you get on the mic. You had a fighter man for that. You know what I mean? So you just, you just did something that's worth. A hundred, a hundred seconds. You know what I mean? You out here just, you got this short little window, you hide, dog. And it's just, it's just indescribable unless you've been there. Oh, yeah, definitely. And for you, you know, some of your best crowd work, I got to read it. The whoop my ass and see what happens. Another instant classic. And then on the MMA hour with Ariel Hawani, you know, fighting is like the neighborhood host. She ain't ever going to love you back. You know, just some electric, some fire. You know, I think the only competition at Featherweight for bars might be Bryce Mitchell with his album. Can we expect a Nate the Train album anytime soon? Uh, I doubt it, man. Maybe a quote. I was messing with my manager. Maybe I'll, I'll drop a quote book. Might you might have to? I think it might sell out. It might be an Amazon bestseller. But you know, it's just absolutely electric when you fight. And more importantly, I know for you, you love putting on for Clarksville, Tennessee. And I don't think there's another city or state in the U.S. that loves you quite like Tennessee. You know, the love out of Tennessee for you, Nate. Is second to none, and you've represented them with the absolute grace, 
and class that we've come to know you for. Talk to me just about being able to put on for your people and being able to bring these performances back to them in tough times, in good times, and just in every time possible. Yeah, man, it's just a privilege and an honor, and it's like my duty. Born and raised right here, you know what I'm saying? I never turned my back on them. Of course, you know, a couple of years back, I had, I was forced kind of to, to go somewhere else to train, but as far as... Uh, Every time I step all around the world, man, I fought everywhere and yelling out Clarksville to the day I die. And uh, I think for me, I never want to be the best of Clarksville. I want to be the one to shine a light on Clarksville. If one of these kids was going to play football or baseball or basketball, it's like, damn, I seen they need to train. I'm going to fight. And they take it up. And, they, and I just want everybody to get paid. No, yeah, definitely. Just setting a strong example, more importantly for the youth and, and for everybody, just I feel like anybody looking for a purpose in life. And I know for you, there's been no shortage of obstacles you've had to endure in your career. You know, we talk about the highs in the UFC right now, but going over overseas to Russia and fighting over there and across Central Asia, you know, some wild stories there. You've really done some things to get to where you've gotten now. And the journey for you has been incredibly story. Talk to me about that, just reflecting on that in these performances and keeping yourself grounded. Yeah. Cause I feel like despite all of the all of the, you know, the noise coming surrounding your post fight and all these, you know, moments that you produce for us, you're very grounded at the core of who you are. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, how many Americans can say they've been to Russia? How many fighters can say they've been to Moscow and fought in the Olympic Stadium? You know what I mean? It's like whew. Just the luck of the draw, every time a, a door shut, they say a window opens, man, and I'm going to jump through that window 100% every time. Absolutely, and I feel like it's very akin to the Rocky story, you know, infamously going over to Russia, fighting in Russia, in enemy soil, and, you know, every time uh, you know, get off the I fire. You know, I had playing the whole time when I was over there. <laughs> Absolutely. Every time. Yeah, you love it. You know, it's just an, a true underdog story in every one of your fights. Not everyone, actually, but for the majority where you do pull it out of the fire. I really do feel like we see the best Nate land where what is it about you that you feel like you just excel to the moment? I feel like every time we see you kind of overcome some adversity, you're always excelling to the occasion. The occasion is to the limit of what you said it to and you've really done a good job at excelling and going to new heights and bounds in the fight game. Oh, 100%, man. When it's all on the line, it's, it's, it's just it, what it sounds like, everything. Most men, think about the fight game, it's crazy. You prepare, you prepare for weeks, months, for this one time. Think about how many men work 40 hours and they're like, I got I need to get paid at the end of the week. Two weeks is long, three weeks. Think, most people couldn't imagine working 12 weeks, 13 weeks, 16 weeks for basically free just for a chance to maybe get half. And then you got to go out there and get the other half. And then you do well, you might get a bonus. It's like, it's all on the line. And then you got to think to yourself, man, that, that camera watching too, that little red light, that little red light blinking. We live the whole world watching. And a lot of men get this pressure on them. And you know, like, like DP said, pressure makes diamonds, baby. No, yeah, definitely. Could not agree more. And in your fight, especially your debut, for those who remember the fight against Darren Elkins, you know, really puts you onto the scene, I feel like. And not the first time you've excelled in a in a non-familiar territory. You know, you fight stateside now more often than not. But going over to Abu Dhabi, it's not an easy feat, especially in the COVID era. You know, you took the risk and it paid off heaps in that performance. You know, you've had since then great fights against, you know, every fight that you've had has been an amazing performance. And even opponents have given you credit in the form of Danny Gay and his coach, Eric Nixick. They said, and I quote, Nate Landwehr is a zombie. He will not stop coming forward unless you put him down. You know, what is it about you that you feel like you get this respect from your opponents and you're able to garner just so much, I guess, respect across the entirety of the MMA world? I think it's just, man, I know that, like, look, I ain't, you got to know what you is and what you ain't, man. And it's like, you might, you might see a hundred fights. I might be faster than a couple. I ain't going to be the fastest. I ain't going to be the strongest. I got to go in there and get it done. You know, as far as talent wise, I'm talented, but I can't rely on that. I got to go out there and mother and just bite down and get the job done. And and there's no, the only thing that separates winners for losers is who got their hand raised at the end. And I'm walking away with my hands raised. No, yeah, definitely. And, you know, after Saturday, you had a good amount of fighters calling you out. I feel like it's become a trend to call out Nate the Train nowadays after his fights. You know, just after the performances you put on, everyone wants a piece of that Nate the Train clout. 
uh, you know, talk to me just about getting your, you know, seeing, being recognized by your fellow fighters. You had Jack Jenkins put a message on on social media. You had Kyle Nelson in his post fight who fought on the same card say uh, some not so pleasant things. You know, talk to me just a little bit about being called out and being the hunted, whereas most of the time you're the hunter in the octagon. Yeah, man, it's, it's, that's what it's all about, man. You perform to where you're on the tip of the tongue. And think about a fight card come off and you ain't on the tip of the tongue, man. I've had eight fights in the UFC, six bonuses. All of them. The only the only bonus, the only fight that wasn't a bonus was the Dan Ige fight. And that was one of the best, that was one of the better fights on the court. I mean, every time I come out and perform and I show up and I show out, man. And everybody could talk that talk. But the UFC gonna skip them because they ain't really about that life. Absolutely. And I feel like part of why you're so renowned and loved by fans is your relatability. And I feel like with Nate the Train, everyone can relate to you to some degree. The struggle, the coming back for, despite the odds stacked against you. You really have been able to bring this re relatability to the fight game. Talk to me a little bit about that. Getting messages from fans, seeing all the support, people saying they're inspired by what you do. What does that mean for you to be able to bring that kind of light to the world? Yeah, man, for sure. It's like... Uh... I'm Nate to train in the UFC. You know what I'm saying? When I when I walk in there, they know who I am. I know I, it's like when I first walked in, I was a nobody. Now I done put some respect on my name. I walk in there. It's Mr. Landwehr, Nate to train. You can't think Nate, you can't see me and not think, oh, Nate to train in the UFC. Your boy got catchphrases for days. You know what I mean? No, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just to see what you've been able to do in the UFC thus far, understanding the business side and under, being able to be a leader also. I know when you train in MMA Masters, you're really a resource for the guys that are younger guys there and a lot of the other people that train out of MMA Masters. Talk to me a little bit about being that kind of resource in the gym and also just having people approach you, giving them tips, pointers. What's that meant for you to lead that example? And also now that you've got a young one, uh, and, you know, first and foremost, congrats on fatherhood. You know, I really do want to congratulate yeah, you there. Yeah. And also just being able to, to be a resource and example for everyone around you in fighting and out of fighting. Yeah, 100%. Like I tell all these young guys, man, when you climb in this mountain, you can't help everybody. But when you turn around, you just reach down and help the next man up. And then when they get up, they help the next man up. And pretty soon, we all up that mountain. You can't go back. You can't climb down the mountain to help nobody. You can't fill the gap yourself. But if somebody close by, boom. Reach that hand down. That's all it. That's all it takes. No, yeah, definitely extending a hand out for those that need it, and also creating a hell of a lot of stories along the way. I know the Abu Dhabi trip was definitely storied, and we talk about fighting in Russia and Central Asia. Nate, you actually met the president of Ingushetia, and you've done a bunch of crazy stuff throughout your career. The journey we talk about, it is like I say when I say storied, it is storied. I've got to ask you, and for the fans at home. If you've got a story in Russia that stands out beyond all the others, please let us know, man. <laughs> yeah, man. See, I, here's the thing. I got some stories, but I really don't like to tell them stories because then it kind of um, it kind of watered down the, the, with the fact that the, my homies that was with me know the story. So if I go telling these stories to everybody, why was my boys with me? You know what I'm saying? That's like some shit that we're going to take to the grave. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I get it. I respect I, I will, it. I will tell you this one little quick story. Uh, so, look, it was after it was like we was fighting in Russia. It was after one of the fights. One of my buddies had came up there. He was on the car with me. And so we like, no, we back in. We we had flew from Ingushetia to Russia. I mean, to Moscow. So we was in Moscow after the fight, waiting on a layover. We was going to fly back in the morning. It was like, look, we going to go out and we going to party. And my buddy was like, no, y'all crazy. Y'all going to get into a fight. I'm like, look. Either you going to go out here and maybe get in the fight, or when I get back, we're going to beat your ass. <laughs> and, and so we go out, we get drunk, come back, and look, <laughs> he had locked the door to the, the hotel room. So look, I just kicked the door, boom, boom, clean off the hinges. And we go in there, <laughs> and uh, it's just funny the way it happened. And then the next day, the promotion called me like, look, did you? What happened to this door? I'm like, man, I kicked that bitch off the hinges. USA, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that hey, that story in and of itself was rem is remarkable. And, you know, just the experiences you created along the fight game. I feel like for you, Nate, 
creating memories in the octagon is very important because we see a lot of younger fighters they come in they have a career and they don't really have anything to remember it by whereas for you i feel like every fight is a story of its own you know getting there getting in the octagon the post fight everything about a nate the train fight is a chapter in a book and every chapter in that book is as storied as the last so talk to me just a little bit about creating these memories in the octagon and being able to put on these performances and just make the most of your fighting career because I know there's a lot of fighters that could take a lot of notes from what you've done in the UFC thus far. Yeah, man. It's like, uh, think about this career path. If it, it's already over and all you're doing now is making memories and that's going to help you a tremendous. Think about like a, if you was on your deathbed and you get to go back once, how would you do it? All out, right? Who cares? Win, lose, draw. It's going to be like, shit, I only got one more shot. So you take that with you and that's going to help tremendously. Absolutely. And Nate, I want to thank you so much for your time and for the quick chat, brother. It always means a lot to be able to speak with fighters like yourself, yeah, share a couple laughs and have a great conversation. Yeah. And on top of that, you know, I got to ask two questions. First and foremost, with the win over Jamal, you I know for you, the name doesn't matter. You know, you talk with your manager, you get that shit sorted and you're able to go and fight whoever the UFC puts in front of you. But I feel like it's not unfair to say that you've got a ranking in your next fight, in your near future, with the performances that you put on. I feel like a ranking is very close by. I got to ask you first and foremost, just that, is there any name that comes to mind looking forward, or is it just yeah, the UFC yeah, puts in front sense. of you? Yeah, it would make sense that me and Caceres run that back. We were supposed to fight. He's sitting at 15. He lost a close one. I, I lost to Dan, then came back one. So that would be a good one. Uh, but whoever they want me to do, they want me to hold the four. I'll hold the four. They want me to get in there and try to crack back at it. I cracked back at it. Uh, we just got to see about this gruely little cut right here, how that's going to heal, and I'm ready to go back. Absolutely. The cut, you know, nasty, but a skill, a smooth, you know, Man, smooth season. How the pictures look, no. The pictures, hey, the pictures are <laughs> gangster, brother. And that blood makes the pictures <laughs> so much better. You got to put it in the Louvre, you know. You got to put it right next to the Mona Lisa. Yeah. We can't be doing that, man. We got to be having yeah. it printed out, sold to the masses. Can an eight to train yeah. sell that shit out? 100%. All right, homie. All right, brother. Thank you so much for your time, Nate. And to the fans at home watching, do be sure to check out Nate the Train on social media. Next fight, whenever it may be. Clarksville, Tennessee. Nate the Train in the UFC, baby. And he fight pretty damn good, too. Can we get a look at the bicep before we close it out? Look at the bicep, yeah, brother. Boy, you know what I'm saying? The gun yeah. show. It's, yeah. been, it's been Dan from Fight Wave, guys. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Do be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day, guys. Thank you so much, Bye, Nate. My man.